What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Shomo Showtime Das. Wanted to do a quick q and I love interacting with you guys, answering some of your questions, hearing from you. So if you like it, let me know. I'll keep them coming out. If not, let me know, and I'll shut the fuck up. What is your weakest body part, and what do you do to bring it up? My arms. My arms are 100% my weakest body part. It's something I've been working on for a few years, actually. As far as what I'm doing to try and bring them up, I'm just trying to throw them different types of stimulus. Something that I've been doing recently that works for me is that I'll go through a period of a few weeks where I'm training my arms extremely frequently every day, every other day, and then I won't do any direct arm work at all for the next few weeks. The arms are interesting because you use them as the secondary muscles in a variety of different compound movements. You use your triceps for every upper body pressing movement, like the bench press, military press, and then you use your biceps for every upper body pulling movement, like the pull up or the low cable row. So cycling between doing direct work for my arms for a period of a few weeks and then jumping off of that and not doing any direct work for a few weeks has definitely been helpful for me and I've put an inch on my arms in the past three months. How much do you bench? 335 is the most I've ever benched. It was a touch and go. I've never maxed out by trying to pause like you would in a power lifting meet, but I hit that at a body weight of 165, so all things considered, can bench press over two times my weight. Pretty happy with it. I'm a bodybuilder and weigh 160 pounds. I bench 315, squat 435, and deadlift 500. Should I do a power lifting meet? That's absolutely phenomenal. You should absolutely do a power lifting meet, dude. People say don't forget your cardio on memes of people having sex. Is sex actually cardio at all? I read somewhere, it may have been Cosmopolitan or something like that, that sex can burn up to 200 calories every 30 minutes or something nuts like that, but I don't really think that that's necessarily accurate. I mean, it depends on a variety of different things. Like, you could go, like, slow and steady, or you could bang like a jackrabbit. It really depends on your style, your personality, how frequently you're having sex. But at the end of the day, no type of cardio is going to do as much for your post-exercise caloric burn as heavy weight training. So be sure to go pick up some fat chicks. What do you look like right now? Like, like right now? Pretty good, pretty tight. Striations are starting to come out, but obviously I've been on low carbs and I look flat and that's totally fine. When you're cutting, you typically will look flat. Little leg shot for you. Boo! What kind of creatine should I use? I know there's monohydrate, HCL, and creolcalin out there. I use creatine monohydrate. It's the most studied form of creatine. It's been proven time and time again to be a potent form. There are a lot of different creatine varieties out there that supplement companies have been throwing out, but at the end of the day, I don't think there's a reason to fix something that's not broken. And usually most of these creatine products tend to be hyped or overpriced or both. Creatine HCL is creatine that's basically bound to hydrochloric acid. It's converted into a basic creatine molecule in your stomach. And some people have suggested that it's more water soluble than creatine monohydrate, but there hasn't been any decisive research that has actually proven this. Creolcalin is basically marketed as a buffered form of creatine. I think it's overpriced, it's BS. You can use it, but you're going to get the same results that you'd get with monohydrate. So I'd say stick to creatine monohydrate 5 grams a day every day for the rest of your life. Do I need to take steroids to become one of the top pro bodybuilders? Yes, you do. Now do you need to take steroids to become a pro bodybuilder? For most people, the answer is yes, but there are some genetic outliers. Who is your favorite pro bodybuilder? I'm a huge fan of the gift, Phil Heath. He's got the muscularity, the look, the shape, the muscle insertions, but I just think he's a great ambassador for the sport. He's super accessible to the fans. I've had the opportunity to meet him. He's a really great guy, but he also has a swagger to him, and I kind of like that. Michael Kafalianos takes last place at every show he does. Do you think he should stop competing? Okay, Michael Kefalianos is a pro bodybuilder. He's bigger than you and me put together, man. I don't know what his priorities are, but if he'd like to step out on that stage, he can keep stepping out. I know he'd kick my ass on stage. He'd definitely kick your ass. So I don't think it'd be fair for us to kind of sit back and say, oh, he should retire. I think that that's totally up to him. I think that he has a great physique. Obviously, that's what's gotten him to the point where he is today. But yeah, as long as he continues to compete, I'm gonna continue to watch. When do you have your first meal of the day. I'll have my first meal of the day within an hour of waking up, I'd say. As soon as I wake up, I pound a black coffee and that gets me going. And then I have my first meal like an hour later. Sometimes between that, I'll do my cardio if I'm doing cardio for the day. And I do think that the timing of your meals is important 
but in terms of how you should prioritize, I think it should go like this. Your first priority should be your total calories for the day, your total macronutrients, just making sure you're getting to those totals by the end of the day. The second priority I would say would be the timing of your meals. When are you getting these macronutrients? Having the carbs before training, having the carbs after training, when are you having your fats? And the third priority is where are these foods coming from? Where are these macronutrients coming from, right? I prefer to get my carbs from white rice as opposed to Sour Patch Kids. Well, I'd prefer to eat the Sour Patch Kids, but I know that the white rice is probably a little bit more of a bro food for me. All right, guys, hope that was helpful. Let me know if you like these Q&As. If you do, I'll be sure to keep them coming. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll link you down below. It's Shomo at ShomoShowtime.com. But until next time, bang, bang.